So, so far we've set up our input boxes. We've set up a, a system to capture this data. Now what can we actually do with it? Well, that's all going to be uh, JavaScript, and that's going to be PouchDB. So, we'll get back into Notepad. And um, up on line 4 is we, where we've got the reference to PouchDB, so we'll make a new line 5. And we'll start a new script pair. And this, and this one I will break into two because all of my code, which will do what I need it to do, will go between these two lines. Notice that when we reference an external JavaScript file, uh, we just have that one line and it references the source and then we don't put anything between the tags. We leave that empty. What The code that we're going to write, we're going to keep it inside of these two script tags, lines 5 and 7. So the very first thing that we need to do is to create this database that will store everything that this user is going to input. So that's going to be var. We've seen that before. Create a variable. The variable we call db. This can be anything. It could be called my database student database, could be anything. DB is fine, it's quick to type equals. What are we going to fill that database? Well, we're, uh, what are we going to fill that variable with? A database, which we will, we will say new. When we have new, that means we're creating a new instance of something. We're creating a new object. The object that we're creating is a pouch DB object. And notice the spelling here. Capital P, capital DB. It should stay black because Notepad++ doesn't really know what this is. And that's okay. This is defined inside of this, the JavaScript, the PouchDB JavaScript file. So don't, don't worry if it doesn't turn a color. But uh, double check that you've got capital P and capital DB. What this says, okay, we're going to create a new instance of something called PouchDB which is the database, and then we're going to put it into this variable. Well, we need to create the internal name of the database. The, the, this is the database that is behind the scenes that we don't really need to, to access directly. We're going to access it every time we reference db. So inside of the parentheses, we're going to put quotes, and we'll say the name of this database internally is called SDCE classes. And uh, as we said, now that we've got this database, we can start to put documents into it, meaning the data that we pull out of those boxes. And I want that to happen when we click the Go button. A moment ago, we did on click alert, and it popped up, and that was easy. Well, we need it to be more complicated. So let's go back to line 19 and say, well, when someone clicks the go button, I want it to uh, run a function that we will invent in a moment called add classes. Open, close, parentheses, semicolon. And that is going to do a lot of things. It's going to check what's in each of these boxes, save that data, then put it into the database, and give us a response on screen that says, you know, thank you for the class, or thank you for, thank you for your data, or you know, good job or something, a result. A lot of things are going to happen, so that's what we're going to call a function here, add classes. We're going to create that function right now. We'll go back to the top, line uh, 7. I'm going to add a new line here, just so that if I, uh, aesthetically, I'm going to separate the, the place where I created the variables with my function. So I'm going to create a function here type function. The name of the function I just referenced a moment ago, which is add classes. Open close parentheses, space, curly brace, couple of enters, close curly brace, semicolon.
So here what we'll do just again for to test if this is correct. It's always a good idea little by little test your code so far if possible. Sometimes it's not possible but at this point we can. Uh, we, will, we will do a little thing here. We'll say um, actually before that um, what we want to do is capture the the contents of these boxes and then do something with it. So inside of the function we will say var. We're going to create a variable and we're going to call this class crn. We're going to create three variables. Yes, I know it's incomplete, but we're going to write class title var class instructor. So here I'm going to create three variables, and notice at the top line 6 I created a variable called db and put a database into it. And here what I'm doing is I'm creating new variables to capture the stuff in each of these fields. Slightly different thing that's happening here, however. I'm creating these variables at the moment that I run the function. So I'm creating a new variable dynamically every time I run the function. When you create a variable outside of a function, it's created and it can be used everywhere throughout the program. When you create a variable inside of a function, it can only be accessed in that function. The scope of it is that this variable only exists in the world of the add classes function. We would not be able to call or use class CRN variable anywhere else except in this function. We're creating these three variables, and at the same time, we will fill them with the contents of each of these boxes. So we'll say on the first one, equals document dot get element by ID. Which ID? Well, the one called CRN field. Specifically, its value. That was like when we did the alert. Show me what's in that box when you click go. But here we're making it a little bit more permanent by taking that value and putting it into the, the variable, class CRN. We need to do just about the same thing for class title variable and class instructor variable. I'll do it once more and then I'll copy and paste. So line 10, document dot get element by ID. which ID, title, field. Right, each of these boxes, text boxes, has a unique ID. That's what I'm talking about here. And then at the end I say dot value. Give me the value. When someone types something into it, give me that value. And then the last one. This one I'll copy and paste. That whole document get element by ID, and that one will be instructor field. Okay, now to see if this is working so far, let's use that div that we called the result so that we can display these three values. A moment ago, we only made it display the first box. Now let's see how we can display all three. And again, just to see if it's working. So we will add a new line after a couple of lines actually. So this is line 13. And I'm going to say um, document.getElement by ID. The ID called the result, which is the one down here. That's that placeholder div. Dot inner HTML equals something. 
right here we're, we're about to say, okay, we're, we're going to capture three bits of data, and then we're just going to display it in that placeholder. If that works, then we can proceed. This is what I'm saying about test it little by little, because this stuff can get complicated, and you don't want to build on a, fal fa on a faulty foundation. If something's wrong early on, it's going to keep getting more wronger as time goes on. So if you fix it early on, it might not be so wrong. Specifically, what we're saying here, okay, replace whatever is inside of that div with the values inside of these variables. So we'll say class CRN space plus class title plus class instructor. save it and run it, put in some values in all three of the boxes, and then click Go. The result should be that those three values then suddenly appear below the form. Not very pretty, don't care about that yet, but at least the values should appear on screen. see if mine worked. I'm going to save it and run it. So I'm going to make up a class number, one, two, three, a class title, uh, Android, an instructor, go. One, two, three, Android campus. No spaces, of course. We didn't tell it to do spaces. That's fine. That should be the result. How many of you have got a result like this? Good. Let me put my code back up here if you still need it. Anyone need some help? can't quite zoom in to show everything. I guess let me make my text larger. Hopefully that works there. Anyone need some help? I did start to use some of the uh, new uh, restraint, uh, constraint uh, things. For example, I know here that the uh, Classes are five digits plus a letter. Yeah. So I apply the regular expressions. And then I also have uh, a value in those. When I start with something, it starts off as red. And if I just put it below, it doesn't like that. But if I put it in, yeah, it's a new feature. So then there now. Now, this brackets editor, one of the things it has is a, um, uh, a feature for which you can add to it that lets you uh, secure it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a page one line. And it's getting better and better support all the time. Um, but um, let's see if I had in here. Um, oh, uh, Simplest one possible. 
So I have an add-on to this that um, shows what they call the railroad uh, track uh, style uh, method of uh, evaluating the thing. Yeah. But it's nice because as soon as your hub is over, one of these things that it knows the rate expression, it won't do it on this one. And I think it's because it doesn't pick it up because it doesn't have the four slashes and delimiters. But as soon as you have one inside of what looks like JavaScript, then it will put that in there. So if you want to put everything that needs to off the OS, all of that, yeah, especially if you want to one little bit of punctuation and screwed up. Uh, but that one is. Uh, It's a nice lightweight editor and it works on every platform. Um, every desktop platform. Oh, yeah. The Outlook is our button. So there were some rated expressions that came up and said some of the other ancillary things. We have all had their expressions on. I was quite surprised when I discovered Linux in 2000. <laughs> the uh, command you know, that we were using was just like the one that I had to make a file. It was weird. It was a long time. So I was like, I'm not sure. All right, so uh, I think we still have a little problem. We'll fix that in a moment. But I want to bring to your attention something that we're going to we're going to be using uh, again. We've used previously. Remember uh, the console in the web browser. That's gonna let me reintroduce that to us because that's going to help us figure out some of our syntax errors and such. So if you're running this on Firefox. What you want to do is uh, run it in Firefox and then right click anywhere and select Inspect Element. Remember we used this when we wanted to figure out the CSS, but the, but the console is also there and it comes really handy when you're using JavaScript, especially when you get errors. So go to Inspect Element, 
in Firefox or whatever web browser, and then you should have console tab right here. Go to console, and this will pop up to tell us any issues that might be coming up. So, in my case, for example, I forgot to declare the uh, HTML uh, character set. I'll do that just to get rid of that message, and then invalid state error, which is inside of that file. Now, let me let me make something. Let me put something wrong here just to show you. Let's say that I typed something wrong somewhere. I don't know where, and then I'm going to run it in Firefox, and I type stuff and I get no result. Notice I don't get any feedback. I am getting feedback in the console. So that's why we want to do inspect element, check the console, right here. Reference error, add classes is not defined, line 1 in my file. So try looking at that. I'll, I'll come over to help people, but look in there and see, oh, okay, that's obviously a misspelling. And oftentimes it tells you what line number to go. This one isn't exactly telling me for some reason. But try looking at your at your console in the element inspector, and then uh, that really helps to figure things out. Okay, so one little thing uh, that we can put here so that it it's going to keep complaining about this. So let's go back and do this uh, on our code line 4 at a brand new line right after head. We'll write this, this meta tag so that we say what character set of code to use. Is there a dash there or not? I have seen it with a dash, yes. Although I noticed your error disappears. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder if we write anything here, if it'll, if it'll care. It might make a difference when you're trying to validate them. Yes. All right, there we go. So uh, we'll add this one line here so that we don't get that other error. Uh, I am getting one which I'm going to ignore because that one seems to be inside of um, pouch file itself. Don't worry about that. Uh, our code seems to be fine. Uh, so, as I said, little by little we start to build this up. Uh, here's what our code is doing so far. Um, we need to do more. Uh, notice each three of these uh, fields uh, relate to one record. These three things define one thing. So, for example, think about what defines a cat. A cat has a tail, four legs, eyes, fur, you know, those things define a cat. So these three things define something. They define a class, a class that people want to take or have taken. So we're going to create a new variable that all three of those are then <coughs> grouped together as one object. And then that one object, will put it into the database, the database we created up on line 7. So we'll say, 
on line 13, I, I actually want to give myself a little bit of breathing room here, so line 14, <coughs> space above and below line 14. I'm going to create another variable here, <coughs> and this will be a class. Those three variables I created a moment ago will define what one class is. So we'll say equals. But this is more complicated. This is holding three things. And here we're going to use something known as JSON notation, or JSON, J-S-O-N, JavaScript object notation, which is that um, we can hold multiple objects defined by one object. Um, we never really talked about arrays in any of these classes, but an array is like a group of variables. Again, like I said, okay, what is the definition of a motorcycle? What's a motorcycle? It has wheels, it has an engine, it has handlebars. Those three things define a motorcycle. So we could also say, okay, what defines a car? Uh, model, uh, you know, uh, uh, the make, the year, and the color. So those three things define a car. So we can say Ford, Taurus, red. We can say uh, Toyota, Prius, white. Those three things define a car. And that's what an, an array is. It defines three, it, defi it can define multiple variables. And that's what we're kind of going to do here with JSON. So we'll do a curly brace, a couple of enters, close curly brace, semicolon. Whenever you see curly braces like this, kind of all by themselves, phantom-like, usually that means JSON. Notice these curly braces, this one connects with this one, but it's part of the function. These right here are all by themselves, and that usually means JSON. What is JSON? This is it right here. Inside we'll say underscore ID colon, next line, title colon, next line, we'll call it inst for instructor. We're going to store three pieces of data in this one variable. Underscore ID is the only one that is 100% required, according to PouchDB. We need to be able to reference the, the data in our database, so it needs an ID. Either we create it, or Pouch will do it for us. Like I said, if Pouch does it for us, we'll have A572946-129285206. It's going to give us our own, it's going to give us its own ID. We're going to define our our, we're going to define it ourselves. Question. Is there, um, does it have to be a certain value, right? Like, does it have to be a number or text or... Actually, text? actually, the things that uh, Pouch will store are strings. So text, basically. Now, numbers aren't really text. Numbers are numbers. So we would have to do... Um, we would have to change the type. Uh, if it is a number, let's say 100, it's not going to see it as the number 100, it's going to see it as the, as the 1, the 0, and the 0. So we would need to write a little, we would run, run a little quick JavaScript command that says convert that into a number. So that is annoying, but uh, what pouch stores are types of strings always, and then we can convert from type to type. So here we need a unique identifier for this piece of data, and we've got a unique identifier, the class CRN. So we'll type class CRN. The one we, the one we created right here and grabbed from the screen right here, comma. Very important. So the first item in the JSON string, and then comma. The next one, comma, and then the last one. The title, the title of the class. Well, I've got a variable for that. Class title, comma. And then what's the what's the instructor? It's class instructor. And that one doesn't need any terminating notation.
So the point of this is this at, in the beginning needs a little bit of setup and it looks weird perhaps, but as we go on it, it's going to be very cool because we'll be able to reference any value of object inside of the main object with dot notation. You can say a class dot title and get that title for that particular object. All right, so I'm curious about something here. Let's change line 20. So everything after the equals, line 20 after the equals here, remove all of that and just type a class. Because a class is supposed to hold all three of those values. Okay, don't worry about that just yet, then we are going to put that stuff into the database. So if that didn't do anything, don't worry just yet. Uh, okay, so we've got these three values that we are collecting, and we're collecting them as one super object, a class. And then we're going to put that into the database. We haven't really put anything into the database. We're still setting it up. So now the next step here is we're going to write db. That's the name of our database. And we can run a variety of commands on the database. That's what the API is telling us up here. For example, it's saying, this is what we're about to do. We're going to create or update a document. Uh, db.put. We're going to put some data into the database. Which one? The one we called DB. And we, we, we feed into it the document, the, the data, and then we've got a bunch of other optional parameters. So our code is going to be db.put open and close parentheses and then semicolon. And here we're going to get complicated. So actually, I'm going to break this up like that. And so according to the specification, the very first thing inside of the put is the data we're putting into the database. So here it's a class, comma. So that's cool. All three of those things that the user puts types in are stored in that. So put all of that into the database in one fell swoop. And then what follows is a bunch of optional stuff, but we'll take advantage of that by, um, by doing a little bit of a um, of error checking, meaning um, these are the things that we take for granted. Like when we uh, when we log into Facebook, for example, there's username and password. If on username you type, I don't know, a bunch of ones uh, and, and, and your correct password, it'll say, you know, that's not a valid email. It's expecting an email, not a bunch of ones. Or let's say uh, the CRN can only be numbers, or it can only be six letters long, or, or whatever. Uh, so that's what we take for granted. Someone had to program all those possibilities. When we do something more complicated, we have to think about, you know, we have to think, what can, how can the user mess this up? How can they put the wrong thing in and hopefully deal with it? Us, we have to be the ones to deal with it. So we'll do a little bit of... Um, of, of error checking and such here. Uh, so, so what you're doing as part of the form? 
We could. There's many ways. There's many ways to do it. But the way we're doing it here is that we click the we click the we we click the button that says uh, add classes, and we're doing it at that moment. Remember, we put action equals hash, so the form itself is not doing anything. We're doing it via the JavaScript here. So we, we could do it there that way, perhaps too. So after the comma, we'll say function. We're going to make an anonymous function here. Um, not anonymous, but we're going to create a function here, and we will call this callback. And this needs an open and close parentheses. And it needs an open and close curly brace. So what I'm doing here is dynamically at this moment, I'm going to check a couple of things. If there's an error saving stuff to the database, uh, or if there's no error, so a positive result or a negative result, basically. I'm going to check for those two. Is it a positive result, negative result? Um, and so I'm going to be checking if-else statements and such. So this actually, I want to break it up onto the next line. Actually, I want to break it up like this. That originally this is closing the put. And that angle bracket is closing the function called callback. So inside of the callback, we have, like I said, either a uh, positive result or a negative result. Uh, the first one here, it's going to check, is there a negative result or is there a positive result? So we'll say here, error, comma, space, result. Why do we want to write it in line? We could write it offline, and you can create it as a separate function. We could, but it seemed like um, so. This 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 thing that we're going to end up with works this way. We could probably do it that other way too. But I'm I'm going by a tutorial also that that works this way. So sure, there's like many ways to to skin the digital cat. So. This is a little bit different than we looked at before, but what we're doing here should look familiar to everyone, right? We've got function, we name the function, we put in some parameters. Uh, also, the, the documentation in pouch, you know, here we've got callback. What is the function that we run based on our results? So notice this example here, function. This one is the anonymous function, a result or a response. Same, same sort of thing, negative, a negative result, positive result. But there we're actually using an anonymous function here, where we're using a named function. Yes, exactly. So they, yeah, they, they didn't name a function. It's an anonymous function. Same kind of concept, first the, um, the negative result and the positive result. So now inside of inside of this function, here's when we're going to check. Was there an error? If there was an error, then maybe give the user feedback like try again or or, or the specific error that happened. Or else there's not an error, so that means, okay, put this, this data got put into the database. So we'll do this. Inside, uh, this is line uh, 21. We'll write if, and we'll do open, close, parentheses, space, curly brace, couple of enters, close, curly brace. This is going to check if something happened, if something is true. Uh, 
either the positive result or the negative result. So, inside of this if, then we will say if there is no error, it worked, and we'll say, you know, database updated or something, if there's no error. So that means we'll write exclamation point error. The exclamation point is, is not if there's no error. What's that? In, in, well, let's look at the documentation. We might be getting ahead of ourselves. So we just want to check what kind of possible errors. Uh, we can actually get a, we can out, have that output because it could depend. It could depend on the person, did they type wrong kind of data? Did the database not load up? So there's a bunch of errors we can we can get. So right here we're simply saying, is there any kind of error? If there is no error at all, we will do the positive result. So inside of if, we'll make the message appear Um, we'll actually repurpose this, line 26. Line 26 was the one that was showing the result of whatever we put in. Let's, let's repurpose that. Let's, let's cut and paste this. Let's take line 26 and put it inside of this if no error. So I'm going to select line 26, and you can actually drag and drop it in Notepad. You can select that text and drag it up here. But what I wanted to say here after the equal is just a friendly uh, message on screen for the user. So in quotes, remove where it said a class, and then in quotes, we'll just say added class. So this will give feedback that we've added a class to the database. Question. <coughs> Yeah, why wouldn't we just display the, the variable that's in the result? I assume the result shows something like record added or something. We could. It might be too technical, though. But let's let's try that, actually. That might be fun. Let's just make it say result. Sure. Well, where's result coming from? Result automatically is called back from put. So something is inside of error and something is inside of result. Just for fun, let's see what it is. It'll probably be pretty technical. Let's just see what it is. So here we're saying, okay, the result of putting the, the data into the database, if it's a positive result, if there's no error, show me what that result was. You know, PouchDB says it is. So at this point, let's see what happens. And this is the thing with a lot of, a lot of times with this, this programming stuff that you're going to get um, very technical results. So you're going to get probably, let's so see. What did you do there with the divide the data? I'm getting the same thing. What's that? What I did was uh, I had misspelled on purpose add classes just to show that there was um, an error. Well, in the example that that I'm working off of, I don't. I when I when we've done this before in previous classes, we didn't. 
and it worked. But what you're saying makes sense. Now, when we did do this previously, I, we, it was um, pouch version like 2.8 or something, and now they're on 3. Point something. So maybe they maybe they did change it. But I did test it earlier today, and it worked. So uh, did it did it work for anyone? Did you get a result coming out? Object, object, object. object. At least you got object, object, which is good. I'm getting nothing. Yeah, we removed 26 now. Well, we moved it up to 22. But object, object is just show, is just saying that, you know, that's the result of, of put, but it's not translated into Probably anything. Probably it doesn't exist within the class now. It's just giving the, the class or the type of, of whatever we've got here. Um, so in any event, though, uh, I'm concerned because mine doesn't display anything at all. How many of you, uh, is it not displaying anything? Okay. And how many of you are getting object, object? Okay. Uh, let me try this also. Uh, let me try Chrome. I'm going to get a second opinion here. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to add the else part of this. Doesn't quite work just yet, but perhaps with adding else cuz I'm not getting a, I'm not getting much feedback about what's going on. So the the point of this if is to check, you know, if there's any possible error. So I haven't dealt with what if there is an error. There's some sort of error perhaps that I'm not seeing. So here's where perhaps it should be more complete the else. We were going to do this anyway, but we're going to do if and we're going to do else, meaning either there's the positive result or else there's a negative result. So on line 23, I'm going to write the else statement. Else and then open curly brace, and then next line close curly brace. And then on that else, line 24, I'm going to add console.log. And I'm going to say, tell me what the error is. So this might help me figure out a little bit of what, what's going on here. If this is supposed to be giving me back uh, an error or a positive result, it should help me out here. Yes? Um, if you add the record the same time with the same CRN, would you get an error? Probably? With the same CRN, yes. If we're trying to add it with the same CRN, that should give us an error. Good point. But uh, I'm trying to add it for the first time, so let me let me check what happens here. I'm going to go to console log, inspect element. If I click go at this point, all right, that's fine. And then I'm going to add. some other data.
All right, so we're going to take a break very soon, but here's what I'm seeing. Now, um, let's actually do this together just so that we're kind of seeing more behind the scenes also. Uh, let's go back to Notepad and save this. And then let's go to Run Chrome. Let's switch. Let's definitely go to Chrome because I want to see is stuff getting saved to this database? And Chrome has a built in viewer to see the database itself. Firefox, I think you need the, the Firebug plugin. But we'll look at Chrome. So go to um, Launch Chrome. Before you do anything, before you, before you do anything, you want to right click Inspect Element. And one of these tabs here is uh, Resources. Click on Resources. And this would show you all the databases that we have access to, specifically IndexedDB. Uh, local storage, remember that? When we did it very basically, there should be some local storage stuff in there. We saw that last month. But now we're working with PouchDB, and that's going to save inside of IndexedDB. So if you open that IndexedDB, I see here Pouch SDCE classes. You can stretch that out. And then a variety of ways to view the data in the database. If I look at local, if I look at by sequence, so far I've added two values. I've done this twice. And the first one right here, title, that gibberish, and then the other one, that gibberish. So it seems that I'm adding data, but I'm not getting these, res these error results. So watch this. I'm going to do, I'm going to do again. I'm going to do one, two, three, Class Android, Instructor Campos. Go. I did get a classes added there in Chrome. That might be the problem. I'm going to refresh this, and if I look at look if I look at by sequence, the third bit of data that I added to the database is what I just wrote. Title instructor ID. So I think Firefox. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Whatever version we have here might be the problem. So I'm going to try it in Firefox again. So I'm going to go. Also, if you add the same data again, it's going to complain. If you add the, the same CRN, because the CRN is the unique identifier. And if you're trying to add the exact same CRN, it'll give you an error. So I think the problem is going to be Firefox. We're going to be running this in Chrome. So in Chrome, I'm getting a result. I'm going to put in another class, some other stuff, etc. Go, and I do get class added. So check inside of Chrome. Question. Mm -hmm. Revision. Revision. Uh, Pouch DB is keeping track of uh, revisions to uh, to your data internally, and that's cool because um, th this is how you can know to update a record. Is the data that we're putting into this record new or old data? So it's keeping track of, of, of revisions to the data. Um, that's why perhaps we're trying to input this data with the same R CRN and it doesn't want to work. So it, we didn't add this. This is something internal that's built into the PouchDB standard. And that's okay. We, we want that because later on we can compare. Is this record new or old? when we move from one device to another, let's say. Uh, so that's the third bit of data that's being added, the fourth bit. What's that? It uses that like the synchronization. Exactly. This, this works when we do synchronization. When we go from one device to another device, we want to synchronize. Does this, is this data old or new? We can check for that. So, um, again, the confusion is that it seems that Firefox, for our testing purposes, won't work. We're going to use Chrome. And looking inside of the uh, 
element inspector in the resources, this will tell us. This will pull back the curtain and this will show you. Here's the database. That's the name we wrote earlier, SDCE classes, prefixed with underscore pouch. If we create another database, it'll be called underscore pouch underscore my new database. And then all the data is, is here, and these are different ways to look at it by sequence. The first item added, the second, the third, the fourth. Uh, we can look at it over here, document store by, by key. Um, ID, value, etc. And so forth. So, it seems a little confusing, and it is. This is complicated stuff. But I am seeing the data appearing here in the database. The title, the instructor name, and the CRN number under ID. And if you click on these, then it'll go in and show you even more of the data in a different way. So I'm not getting any error. Mm -hmm. It's not the same error. Are you getting any result here? No. But we have a if else, right? We have a what? If else. If else, yes. There is no error. If there is an error, this data seems to be not Okay, here for example on mine, I am oh, getting an error. What's that? It's a console one. Yes, it's going to be on the console. This one's saying document update conflict. I'm trying to add the same ID, IO, IO, I. I already have that there, so it's telling me right here document update conflict. Uh, I haven't specified to update the conflict. It thinks, I mean, to the record, it thinks I'm trying to add the same <coughs> one again, which it doesn't like. Yes? So, is that the only thing that you can Or can you have several things together that need to be unique? Like in a lot of cases, you can have more than one yeah. um, uh, variable primary key. Yes, uh, in PouchDB, the only one that is the unique one, well, besides revision, is ID. And uh, we cannot make other ones. Well, I haven't seen the latest 3.0 standard, but when I was using 2.x, uh, only ID was the one that was unique. Uh, so that's really all that we need for most of our purposes in this app. Obviously, if we're getting more complicated, perhaps we want more primary keys. But this is the one that has to be the unique one that references everything for that record. All right, so let me get a show of hands again. When you switched over to Chrome, how many of you, raise your hand, did this work? Seems like it. Okay, how many of you seem to still have some issues? Okay, we'll, uh, we'll do a break in just a moment. But this is now, again, this is, this is the can of worms. This right here, we haven't even dealt with, okay, what if the CRN has to be a number and someone puts letters? What if the CRN is four digits long and someone puts five digits? You see all of that that we have to deal with to get good data into the database. Right now, it's very simple. You can plug in anything into the database, even if it's wrong. So, um, can of worms. Let's take a break at this point and uh, answer a few questions, and then keep working with this thing, because we've got more, more of it to do, more to do with it. So 10 minutes, it's 8.11. We'll come back at 8.21.